Hello YouTubers once again for another how-to video. Um, just because I feel like it's something that a lot of people struggle with, I'm going to show you today on how to get um, fish that are usually used to live foods onto frozen and freeze-dried. Um, it's one of the bigger issues with more wild-caught fish is how they're taken from the wild, they're put straight into an aquarium, and they're not used to that transition over to freeze-dried or pellets or any kind of dried fruits just because um, you don't get that in the wild. There's no one out there holding food to you unless, of course, you're stuck on the shore and there's people feeding you or something like that. But otherwise, um, it's usually a struggle for a lot of people when it comes to different species of lionfish, different species of scorpion fish or angler fish. Um, what else can I think of? It's not really a whole lot else, I, I guess, out there. Any kind of predator fish is usually a problem. Um, so this is just how I do it. This is how it's worked for me for the past how long now, and it's something I've kind of got down to a science. Um, so what I usually start off with is I look and I go, okay, what looks like a good predator item for this fish that they would like to go after? Now, for example, with smaller lionfish, you don't you don't really have much of a choice. Sometimes um, goldfish are too big for their mouths, so it's just kind of like a, a toy and it's too quick and they don't bother going for it. Um, something that really seems to work out for them, ghost shrimp. Um, it's pretty much any kind of a shrimp you can find at a fresh at a, a pet shop. They are usually kept in fresh water. They have been kept in salt water before. However, usually um, if they haven't been trained to stay in salt water, they'll die off in maybe in the next half hour to an hour or so. Um, it's just not something that they're used to living in salt water. So no big deal though, because your point is to feed the fish and get it dead within the first 10 seconds, hopefully. So it doesn't really matter if it's in fresh water or salt water. Um, so I usually use ghost shrimp when it comes to smaller lionfish. Now when it comes to larger fish, for example, as you saw in my spotted scorpion fish video, um, I try out goldfish. Goldfish, feeder minnows, feeder guppies, um, anything that I know is going to be fairly good size and something difficult to kind of chase down, I guess. Um, now what this does is gets them used to the idea of feeding in your own aquarium. For a really great example, the scorpion fish was wild caught probably about a previous, probably about a week before he was actually in my aquarium. So wild caught, sent to my house in an aquarium. Big difference. You don't have krill, dead pieces of orange krill, just being handed out to you. It's just not something that happens. So he has to get used to the idea of, hey, this is an aquarium, I get food here, this is what I have to eat. So I threw the goldfish in there. That's the first step. He looks, he goes, you know what, that looks interesting. I'm going to eat that. It's bright, it's shiny, it's orange, it's active, it's small enough to be eaten. Easy. I did that for probably about a week. I would space it out. Every other day I gave him a goldfish. However, at the same time, I would offer jumbo krill. It's just freeze-dried krill. Um, little bits in there. So what I recommend, it's always a really good bonus when it comes to pufferfish, lionfish, anything really. Get yourself a pair of feeder tongs just because they do an amazing job. I know it's something stupid. You can sit there and go, well, I can use my hands. But do you really want to stick your hand inside of a tank with a bunch of venomous fish? It doesn't really sound fun. So recommend them. Eight bucks. Yeah, cheap. They're pretty. I think they're eight inches or something like that. But they're really nice. I made my zoom in. Let's see if we can get that. So um, I recommend getting a pair of feeder tongs if you're going to go for freeze-dried stuff. Just because another thing that happens is um, fish can be kind of pushed away or scared because they see your hand. You're a larger enemy. They don't really know how to feel about it. So then um, you kind of risk the chance of getting them to turn over to actual different foods because um, a bright glowing pink hand is a lot different than a small little pinch with a piece of food in the hand. Um, so I did that for every other day, I fed him live goldfish, gave him one goldfish every single time. I would offer the freeze-dried krill by waving it in front of his face. With no luck, I backed off, I gave him another goldfish. By the end of the week, he was on freeze-dried krill. Now, he's gotten used to the idea that this guy is feeding me, I'm getting the food from him, this goldfish is food, okay, what is this bright orange thing? This could also be food. So then they try it. After they try it, it is so simple to get them onto it. It's just the easiest thing in the world. Now, the downside is with the smaller lionfish that I do currently have, 
they can't eat a full piece of jumbo krill. So they have to break it up. That's the only difference. Now with lionfish, they're not the brightest things in the entire world. They're just looking for whatever kind of moves, whatever looks tasty. So you have to give it a little bit of an action, give them a little bit more interest in it before you can just go ahead and say, here, eat this big piece of krill and then we'll back off from it and they won't go for it at all. You have to look at their mouth, judge how big it is, assume what the size of the krill is. If it doesn't look like they, you know, if they go after it and they bite onto it and they spit it out and they realize it was too big for them, try a smaller piece. But it might not happen for another half hour. You have to wait, give them time, because what happens is, um, one of the lines I have, which I'll show you in a second, is uh, he's a little bit more picky. He'll go after a piece if it's too big for him, He'll bite onto it, realize it's too big, and then he'll back off. And he won't eat for another half hour to an hour just because he gets the idea that, hey, you're trying to trick me into eating something that isn't alive. Um, so you just gotta kinda think and go, okay, what is he doing right now? How is this gonna work? And go from there. Um, it's not really too difficult. Like I said, usually about a week is what I would expect. Um, but as long as they're getting some type of food, it's always good. So go shrimp, minnows, goldfish, um, it's not too difficult, it really isn't. I mean, the northern pike, which are wild caught, I fed them gold shiners, goldfish, um, and then after they got the idea of how to eat in the aquarium setting, I threw pellets in there and I would offer that, and they take pellets now, so it's the same idea. So uh, I'm just gonna show you quick, just because I'm so proud of it, um, and the scorpion fish is actually right up front looking for food, just to show you how, um, how excited they get over freeze-dried krill now, it's just so amazing. So for a fish that could have cared less, all three of them, all three of the fish in this tank right now could have cared less about what kind of foods were in the tank that were not live. They would have never touched them. Doesn't even matter. Oh, look at that. That's a big juicy krill. Don't care. Now they're so willing to go after it that they'll fight each other for it. It's just really cool. So I'll show you that here quick. Okay, so we've got the scorpion fish right up front. We've got the violet and revolution lionfish, the black version, so he's gonna have a little bit more darker color when he gets older. And then recently is the Fu Manchu lionfish. Now I got this guy at work yesterday, oh, two days ago on Saturday was my last day at work. Um, I'm gonna be taking off for the summer just because I'm gonna have a summer job to be paying a lot more, so I figured to celebrate I would buy the one fish I've been working with there for the past couple months. Um, we got it, he was probably about half the size he is right now. He was really, really small. Um, so getting him onto freeze dried was really, really difficult just because at a smaller size, um, it's really hard to get a perfect piece of krill and have him go after it. So, I mean, it probably took probably about a week to two weeks before I had him on it. Um, and then he's grown considerably from it. So really proud of it, but ooh, I'm not even showing him. Really cool lionfish, really great coloring. The reason he's in this cup is because I'm watching behavior problems between him and the scorpion fish. That's a big mouth, that's a small body. So we're just gonna see how it all works out. I'm watching, I'm observing, I'm getting him used to the idea that the lionfish is inside the tank with him. Um, the clear cup kind of signifies that. He can go up to it, he looks like he can go after it right away, but if he doesn't, he just backs off from it, then I get the idea that he could kill the last that he's inside the tank. So, just to show you how I go about this, as far as feeding them freeze-dried, the uh, anglerfish also eats freeze-dried krill. So just to get you the idea. Usually grab it from the top, from the tip. You don't want to grab it right from the base just because it kind of holds the whole thing when they go to bite onto the krill. Sometimes it gets, uh, you get the feeder tongue stuck in the mouth. I'm gonna extend my hand a little bit here. Okay, so there he is. In goes the krill. Automatically you see him kind of move. See, you got the lionfish towards it instead, which is not what I want. They're not the brightest fish. Gone. See, just like the amount of interest that he now has on it, where I used to do that all the time to him. I used to wiggle a piece of krill probably about four inches above him and he would never could have cared. I brought it right to his face and he still never would have cared. So it's just really cool to be able to see that. And obviously the lionfish will go after just about anything now. He was originally st um, stuck on live ghost shrimp. Um, lionfish can be a little bit more difficult to get onto um, freeze-dried foods or frozen foods from what I've noticed in my experience just because they're a little bit smaller mouthed I guess they're not the smartest scorpion fish with a larger mouth they're really going after anything they can swallow so if it looks like food it should be a lot easier to get them to transition over to it same with anglerfish um, with the lions they just seem to be a little bit more precision like feeding off the chunks that were missed <laughs> but um, otherwise once they get on to freeze-dried it's really simple it's really basic so 
Um, offer live foods for probably about a week. You know, kind of hold off. Offer freeze dried on and off. Bring it to them, see if they're interested in it. Wiggle it around, make it look like it's food. Um, and usually you should see some pr pretty good results on it. And Fu Manchu also eats it. I get him and I had him eat him when he was into this aquarium a couple of days ago, I think. Well, I got him on Saturday. So on Saturday, I made sure that he was still eating freeze dried because he's used to the aquarium setting already. It wasn't really that big of a deal. So lionfish are usually wild caught as well. So you gotta make sure you get them to move on over. Unless it's being captive bred, it's wild caught. So, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is going to be for my future venomous fish tank. These three will be moved out and brought into the 20 gallon upstairs that I set up for that, how to set up a saltwater fish tank. Um, however, that tank is still cycling. I checked my ammonia on Thursday of last week and it was blue. In case you were wondering, blue is bad. Um, usually when you're going to check for ammonia, the highest they show on the card is dark green, which is, I think, 8 parts per million. I'd have to take a look at it. But blue is bad. So I've got it down to where there's no ammonia. There's just some nitrite in there and the nitrates, which means that the bacteria is working its way and it's trying to get everything all transitioned and moved over. So it's just maybe a matter of another week. But I do have one other lionfish that will be showing up on, well, hopefully tomorrow, Tuesday. So we'll have to see how that works out. Um, it's going to be another dwarf species, but I'll show you in a new video. So hopefully the next time you see a video on the venomous fish, it will be in a different aquarium. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, comment, rate, subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know. If you've got any, any ideas, um, if you've seen my previous videos and you go, hey, I'd like to see a how-to video on how he does that or why he's got that set up or what that fish is in general, send me a message. I'm willing to work with it. Um, I got a comment on my how-to video for the Saltwater Aquarium that I really, really, really appreciated uh, talking about how simplistic everything was and how I'm not any biased towards any of the products. Um, I really appreciated it and I'm so sorry that I forgot your name and I wish I remember the username, but if you're watching this video, thank you. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's comments like that that make me want to keep on making these videos just because, you know, there's people out there that are willing to listen and want to learn and, you know, understand how to do it all now and it's just, it's just cool. So that was the big kick I got out of working at the pet shop was I got to talk people how to set up a saltwater fish tank or a freshwater fish tank and they understood how it all worked and they listened to me and they went step by step and now they're dealing with, you know, from their original 10 to 20 gallon tanks, they're dealing with 55, 75, 125, even as big as 150 gallon saltwater aquariums and they've got corals and live rock and fish and it was just cool to be able to sit back and go, wow, that guy had two goldfish and a platy in a 10 gallon tank and now wants to do, do nothing with saltwater and I talked him into it. And now, now look how, success, how success, uh, successful he was in listening to the tips I had for him. So it's just cool. But, all right, that's all I got for now, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.